Uh, Bachi continue to uh, progress, so he's in good shape. Okay. Jerry, I'm going to watch the film. What, what else stood out from Friday night? Well, I think the the discipline things still continue to bother me, you know, from the game. And that, that's always been a point of emphasis, but we got really hammered home. There's just too many things, pre-snap, post-snap, and things they control during the snap that set us back, field position. Um, and so, again, th- those were the things that we're not about, and and we're making that clear that that's got to improve going forward. Coach, were there any players that, uh, you know, on film look good that would show up in the stat sheet? I think that there was good performances um, all around. I, I think, you know, there's a lot of guys you could highlight. I think Cody Ford had a good day um, on the offensive line. That was good to see. I think some of our interior defensive linemen did a good job. You know, there was a collection of those guys. Um, so, I, again, there, there's guys that stood out in a lot of areas. I, I can't name them all probably, but um, overall there was there was some things to be pleased with. Thank you. Zach Jackson was repping at left tackle yesterday. Is he still in the mix with, with Jonah at right tackle? Yeah. Or is it just to get him some reps there? Yeah, we'll continue to work, continue to look at different things up front and really with all the positions. But it, it's still relatively early in the process. You know, we've only played one game and got two left. And so there will be some things that we can look at. What's your plan? Pull back the rest of the week? Are you going to rotate? Or? Yeah, we'll keep rotating. You know, the plan, um, the plan today would be for Trevor to get the first half in the game. Jake to get the second half. That's that's we've always planned on flipping those guys over the first two games, and um, those guys have done a really good job. I thought yesterday both of them had a really good practice, so that was good to see. And and so we'll continue to work those guys in. They'll both get their opportunities with the ones over the course of the week. Do you think you see Burrow practice a bit this week? Or what does that sound like? It, well, you know, I'm just gonna go back to what I said a couple weeks ago. No, he's doing great. Yeah. Like you plan to play many starters on Friday? We'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see. Haven't um, haven't nailed it all down yet, and I'll communicate with them first and then let everybody know. Is it tougher to play Jamar T, some of those guys, when you know Burrow isn't going to play? Um, that, that's, you know, we take all the things into account, so that's part of the equation. Like with the next step for Burrow be a walkthrough participation, is that something that could be the best way to ease him back in? Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that he's involved in behind the scenes that um, isn't necessarily at that practice. So we'll just continue to take that, you know, throughout our own process. Hey, uh, working with Joe Jose uh, and, and trying to do the manage the load and trying to get a team ready to play, you know, 60 minutes on September 10th yeah. with, without playing much. Yep. How do you, how do you, how do you do those guys, you know, for the guys that didn't play in the game the other day, Joey taxed them pretty good, you know, the day of the game, Friday in the weight room. Um, you know, where there's aerodyne bike and ropes and sled pushes and all that stuff. And, you know, that's part of what we have to incorporate into practice as well, you know, because whether the guys play in these games or not, it's, it's very limited action. So you want them to be ready for a 95 play game on both sides of the ball, like we had against Pittsburgh last year. It can happen. And so that's part of what we've got to factor into our, our practices, you know, starting today, going to Wednesday, longer drives, making sure that these guys feel that um, so that they're ready on, on mid-September. I mean, you had the worst, the worst case scenario was a 95-play opener. Did you, did you tweak anything this, this camp with that in mind saying, oh, hey, this could be this No, no, it's – the weeks fall a little bit different than the preseason games last year. So there, there's a couple more days mixed in there. Um, so I, I like where we're at. I like what we've got planned today, Wednesday, and next next week to get those guys ready. I, I feel like we're in a good spot. When you look at preseason films, Zach, are there different things you look for at different position groups? Different. Um, I think it's more uh, what we want to accomplish to, to see what our guys are about. You know, there might be certain schemes we want to utilize a little bit more on offense to get a look at a position group. Um, maybe not the whole, but just we want to see some guys do some certain things, so we'll ask them to do that. Um, so there's there's some things that we incorporate going into the game and during the game that we ask of our offense and defense to make sure we get a great evaluation of um, more so particular guys than, than I'd say the group as a whole. I guess the reason I ask is, I mean, so many people believe, you know, the offensive line and the offensive linemen themselves believe that that's a unit that has to work together as one, whereas maybe if you're looking at cornerback play, 
do you look at it, look at it that way? Like when you're yeah. evaluating your offensive line? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, there's certain units that are, are very closely tied together, the offensive line being one, you know, and um, it's one of the reasons why they don't like being singled out individually for, for good things. You know, they like to just be grouped together. Um, but I, I think that's one example of a group that's typically tied together. It's helped uh, DJ Turner just hit the ground running and make a couple of plays every day. I, I think he's, he's approached things the right way. I think Chuck Burke has done a great job with him. Um, and so I, I think he's he's just really embraced the opportunities he's gotten. His speed and his quickness have really shown up. Um, and so again, he'll just continue to be incorporated in the defense in any way we can. And and uh, again, it's like stacking consistent days. You know, just because you've had some good weeks um, doesn't mean that we want you to hit that wall or that brick wall in training camp. So I think that's one thing that we'll continue to push through. But but he's been a bright spot. He's done a really nice job. Do I need to see it? No, but again, we'll, we'll keep considering what we want to do with, with all of our guys. You know, Joe Burrow, in the last couple of years, has kind of dealt with things going into the season. How has it been kind of been through the season as well? How has that been like, uh, you know, in terms of the gameplay, getting ready, knowing what you can and can't do, and how do you kind of manage that over the course of the field as good as you possibly can? It's all I know. You know, so it's our normal rhythm, um, to be truthful. That's, that's all that I know at this point of training camp. Anytime you watch old training camp footage, it's always other quarterbacks early on repping plays that we're showing our guys that, you know, maybe we worked on last year. So um, that's kind of been our normal, and that's the reality of it. So I can't really say my, my adjustment would be for him to practice the whole training camp. And so next year, um, you know, we'll we'll have that conversation. But even as he gets into the season, you know, maybe the soft tissue thing, maybe even lingers, it's something that you guys would have experience with. How do you kind of manage that throughout a game week and, and until he gets ready for We'll have to approach that when it gets here. What can the growth of guys like the side sample do for the, uh, the defensive line and the sack numbers and everything like that? Bring energy. You know, first of all, I think, um, you know, Cam's role can be a little bit different. Cam gets mixed in in a, in a couple different position groups. And, um, you know, you need glue guys like that that – maybe aren't a starting role necessarily, but man, you're, you're depending on them sometime anywhere from, from 25 to 50 snaps in a game. Um, and, and, you know, Joseph comes in there at that end position and you, and you expect them to bring juice. You know, they need to be able to help you in first, second down. They need to be able to rush the passer when they don't play as many snaps as Trey and Sam. So I think those guys em- embracing their roles and understanding it and um, giving us what we need in those key moments is, is what we expect from those, those, you know, um, role player type guys. You are, uh... Like a lot of your defensive line and starters played a ton of snaps last year. How much does it help the, the growth and the, the youth and the emerging guys you kind of have across the line? Yeah, it's good to have depth. It's good to have guys who have been here and, and uh, again, understand the role and the value of that role. And um, we also got, you know, four starters that like to play. They like to play a lot, and um, it's hard to keep them off the field. On further review, what did you think about Chris Evans and Chase Brown? I thought there was good things from both of them. I, I think um, – you know, for Chase, the protection, you know, as a young back is going to continue to um, show how how valuable that is and, and necessary it is. Um, I thought there was good things from him. And I thought there was good things from from Chris as well. You know, he had a good he had the opening tackle on the kickoff, um, did some good things on offense. And so, you know, I thought overall it was a step in the right direction for both those guys. Does Trinidad have a shot this week? We'll see. We'll see. We'll keep taking it week to week with him. That makes sense. Okay. Get those guys reps. How different when an indoor practice? Field space, you can find field space. You have to cut stuff no, no, it's in, the individuals infected by it the most. You know, a special teams period when the quarterbacks are working, the O lines working, D lines working. That's the kind of things that get affected when you're inside. Um, individual, you're a little bit more on top of each other. Um, but other than that, you know, once you get into team reps, you, we use one field. You know, we're on field two or field three, and and uh, so there's no difference there once you get into that period. So just just a little more condensed when you're doing the individual portion of things. Have you, have you seen as much production and progress, I should say, from the string of padded practices that, that you would hope? Yeah. It's been a long run of padded practices. Right? Yeah, it's going to get longer. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, but that's, again, that's what we – 
we don't we don't go three days in a row. We go two, and and when we go two, we want it to be physical. We want it to be taxing, and then you get that day off, and then we get back at it. So, you know, really, it hasn't fallen where it's kind of been a two and a day off and a two. That's going to come next week. Um, this week it's just two on, one off, one on. Go play the game. So, um, overall, we ask we ask them just to give us your all. It's going to be hot. It's going to be full pads. It's going to we're going to hit. Um, and then we're going to take care of you on that third day. And I think that's a, that's a trade off those guys like. As a head coach, we have someone's off field situations kind of now, you know, affecting the practice schedule. Is there a sense of frustration or is there something that you just have to manage? It doesn't affect any of our practice schedule. Coach, how much do you appreciate having the same coordinator since you came here? They know what you want. Yeah. But it's time to make those decisions. You guys are already locked up. Yeah. It, there's a lot of things that kind of go unspoken and taken for granted probably on my end. I think that's more um, just the, the the pace of training camp and our expectations. There's less that needs to be said. I think it, it'll continue to come up in game situations that we're all on the same page. It's just a quick, quick one word or a quick glance or we're, we're on the same page that way as opposed to, you know, if you do bring in somebody new, you have to educate them on some of the things that have happened here in the past and and um, I was just, you know, um, talking earlier, and and I think some of the in-game situations that are rarer than others, we've all experienced them together over the course of five seasons, and so we've we've all learned from them together, as opposed to taking someone and educating them on what we've been through. It's again some of the unspoken stuff. Cheeto's still pushing them hard. But- yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cheeto's Cheeto's doing everything he can, you know, and it's just us um, purposely limiting him to make sure that, um, you know, you don't push and have a setback. And so things have been positive with Cheeto and we'll keep finding ways to to progress with him.